Kat shared with you when she introduced me this morning that she and I went as our first meeting on a walk and talk. And apparently I freaked her out a little because it was a little bit more steep than she was expecting. And yet we had this incredibly creative conversation. And so um, she wanted me to come back and just talk about how do we bring that kind of creativity into our life by using our body as part of our work? And how do we actually make this a daily part of our life? So when I had first given this talk, well, actually, let me back up. So when I used to do this, it was because I was mentoring a bunch of Stanford kids that I was teaching. They would want extra time. I would always be sitting in a conference room at the end of the day, exhausted, meeting with them that I'm going to be generous with my time. And yet I was noticing I was a size 12, a size 14, which there's no judgment to that, right? But I was just noticing the one person who was never making it to the top of the list was me, my personal health. And I thought, okay, these are students. Why don't I just ask them to join me for these things? And I said, just bring a pair of change of shoes. I made it my last meeting of the day before I would go home. And it gave me a chance to be super generous in terms of my time, but also really get something I needed done. But when I was explaining this to other people besides the students, I would actually have to explain what a walk and talk was. That's why I'm so excited about having a TED talk. I no longer need to explain it. And because I literally had to write, so we walk and we talk. And I actually had a cut and paste. I mean, honestly, because people were like, well, what's that? And, uh, and what happened shortly thereafter, when this sitting as a smoking idea, I published it first in Harvard as sort of a, a trial balloon of an idea to see if like, you know, was there resonance around it. It went really viral, became one of the top five pieces that year that Harvard published. And, um, and then I ended up giving the talk and now I no longer need to explain it. But Stanford also, Stanford University did a piece of creativity research that showed that you can get a 40% bump in your own creativity of ideas, both in the quality and the quantity just by adding motion to it. And it was interesting because they hadn't planned on this research. They wrote me this note afterwards saying, well, we're thinking about it. Do you have any ideas for us for how to scope and structure it? And that research has now been quoted. So now if you see sitting as a new smoking, that was a, that was a meme that got started on that talk. And then, um, and the research behind it really proves it out. So we're in a field that requires the very best of us. All of us, as I talked about this morning, all of us, even the things that other people might discourage to claim that back, that includes this vessel that we live in. And how do we figure out how to we, you know, to use that as part of the process? So simple things people actually used to ask me, so I'll say it now. People are like, well, how do you take notes? Does that ever, does that come up for anybody? Well, how do you take notes during a meeting? I'm like, you can pause and then pull out a piece of paper. This is not hard. Or the other thing I actually do is I wait till the very end of the conversation. I go, okay, let me just make sure I remember all the things I have to follow up on. And then I'll pull out my phone which I've kept away the whole time, imagine that. And I type out to both of us, here's a couple things that we both have to remember. And it gets us like focus on action instead of being distracted. The other thing is there's this really amazing bond that happens when you're starting to breathe together that you don't do in coffee shops. And um, I think there's a neuropsychology about how much you can actually be bonded by being like this instead of like this. So. I want to encourage you all to do this in your daily life. The Google actually, for example, loved the idea so much they actually built little maps. Maybe you can do this back at your firm. 15 minute walks, 30 minute walks, 45 minute walks, hour long walks. So it was like, you don't have to even decide where to go. They just gave you a tiny little map that you could just pull and cheat. Um, other companies have actually built paths on their campus. So, you know, if you guys are lucky enough to have that. One person actually figured out that if we went up and down certain paths of the stairs of the building, because it was an urban setting, you could actually do it that way, which for some stairs, man, tough, right? If you haven't worked out, tough. But um, maybe you can just go slow enough, and, and Kat would forgive us, right, for going <laughs> slow. So um, I want to encourage that because we all need to find a way to kind of reconcile these different things and to show how it is done that we're going to do it next. So in order for us to get to our next venue, which is apparently on the seventh floor, somebody help me if I've gotten any of that wrong, it's still on the seventh floor and we don't want to wait for the elevator, we're going to take the stairs. And I have a request while you're taking the stairs. As you're walking alongside someone, ask them what they learned, either from this morning or from yesterday, and what they're going to do about it. Because the one thing about the walk and talk, too, is about how do we live our ideas into being. So this is about us living fully alive, health and all, claiming all of us, 
And the chance to have a conversation with someone else might help you articulate that and name it for yourself so that someone else can join you in that path. Um, so if I, if I got the directions right, out the door and up the stairs, and lighting gun and on. The other thing are working for those of you that do not feel like doing this. It's a great bonding opportunity. And, uh, and a great chance to just kind of freshen up because we've all been sitting. We're not using this too much. Can you believe I stood in front of the TED stage and actually smacked my ass? <laughs> so it's a really funny little side story. Can I tell you a side story? You have a minute, right? Okay, so funny side story is I have rehearsed this talk at home much more so than I did this morning uh, because it was, you know, like it's a video kind of exercise and they, they scare the shit out of you. And the moment when I do this and I, I actually meet Bill Gates' eyes. And there's this moment of terror that goes through if you look at the video now, of like, I just smacked my ass in front of Bill Gates. And because like in the front row is always like Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates, and that just happens to be the person's eyes I met. And I'm just like, oh my God, that just happened. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, recover, keep going on, and, um, and try to give this talk. And I just always like, I just smacked my ass in front of Bill Gates. So, um, but we are using this more. If we don't, we will end up um, both improving our health and our creativity. Thank you.